there are signs, and my main contention is this. My main contention is that on the next rally in silver, significant rallies, you know, say over $30 or $28 or some number like that, if the big shorts, the big concentrated shorts, don't add to their short positions, then silver prices will fly. Okay, there's nothing that's going to stop silver prices from exploding. Well, obviously, it's in connection, particularly with the silver market, the COMEX futures market, to be specific. And the uh, cheaters or those that are doing the nasty are what we call the commercial traders, the commercial side of the market. That word commercial, you know, throws uh, people into a thought process that I don't think is correct. It, it, it implies that the commercials on the COMEX are mining companies and legitimate hedgers of commodities, silver and gold and, and other commodities. And that's not the case. The, the commercials is just a term that the CFTC, the Commodity Commission, lumps and categorizes different traders buy, and the commercials are every much speculators, as are the non-commercials, who are generally considered to be pure speculators. Everybody's speculating. That's one of the key features I would mention. There's no real, true, legitimate hedging. The transfer of risk from producers to speculators taking place on the COMEX, so virtually none. So basically, what's happened is hiding under the guise of being legitimate hedgers, these commercials, which are you know basically banks and financial institutions operating as if they were hedging and legitimate traders, they're basically cheating the other traders. And how they cheat is that they send out false price signals via high-frequency, algorithmic, computer-based trading that can set the price. And they do that, these commercial cheaters, because they know that the speculators on the other side, particularly managed money traders, we call the category, but others as well, operate under a technical basis, technical format. They generally buy when prices go up. They sell when prices go down. So what the commercials can do is basically send out false price signals today being a perfect example uh, we're down you know new lows and in silver that's basically how the game is work it's cheating because the markets are not designed weren't approved by the u.s congress to for this purpose the markets were approved and we're allowed to have futures regulated futures trading so that the real legitimate producers could hedge their risks and speculators would take it. But the real producers are not part of this, okay? They're someplace else, not on the Commodity Exchange Inc., not on the COMEX. And the commercials have run with that, and it's pure cheating. There's nothing but cheating going on. That's always a go-to kind of thing because no one can prove it. It's like there's no any kind of transparency in the OTC markets. We get a quarterly OCC report, Office of the Control of the Currency, that measures these things. But it's as clear as mud. They don't disclose any kind of detail whatsoever. So it's a convenient excuse to say that all the commercials basically have such a big short position on the COMEX because they're hedging you know, what, what is, I guess, a long position on the, on the over-the-counter market. But when you stop and think about it, who the heck is going short on the over-the-counter market if it's not the same COMEX crooks, okay, that are short in the futures? It's, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. It's one of those things that sounds good until you think about it a bit. And then you see it's pure nonsense. So I would put that in the pure nonsense category. Spoofing, as I've alleged from the moment the J.P. Morgan case came visible a couple of years back, two or three years back, spoofing is a short-term tool, okay? One of the, the many tools in the uh, COMEX commercial crooks, cheaters, dirty toolbox, okay? It's a short-term tool that can influence the price on a very short-term basis, a few seconds, a minute, something like that. Spoofing is 
chicken feed. It's not the heart of the crime. The heart of the crime is the concentrated short position, even if that doesn't resonate with people, whatever, that's it. This big new decline that we've had today, it's been you know, going on for a while, is that this is how the big shorts can buy back their short positions without people realizing it, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but okay, when the turn comes and when the rally begins in silver, because the only reason we're down in price is because these big commercial cheaters are rigging the price lower to do exactly this, buy back the short position. Once they stop shorting on the next rally, which I believe is going to be the case, I don't know that, but I believe it, it's a different world. It's, it's going to be a world in which I can give you an example. There was a time in the last 10 years or so where silver didn't have had a very large concentrated short position but it didn't have the largest concentrated short position there are signs and my main contention is this my main contention is that on the next rally in silver significant rallies you know, say over thirty dollars or twenty eight dollars or some number like that if the big shorts the big concentrated shorts don't add to their short positions, then silver prices will fly, okay? There's nothing that's going to stop silver prices from exploding. The only thing that could possibly stop the price explosion that's to come in silver is if temporarily these big shorts come back in and add aggressively to their existing short positions. I don't think they will. I don't know for sure. They don't uh, confide in me. But I don't think they will because they've gone to a lot of pain and measured action of reducing their short position now more than it's been in quite some time. And I do think that the CFTC, in responding to me, saying they're taking it under consideration, my allegations, they had to communicate this of these big short crooks and it's evolving uh, we'll find out on the next rally on the next rally if these guys add short positions and you can disregard what i'm saying now if they don't add short positions it's the conditions are just completely different and silver prices will explode so we'll get to see that probably in the very near future palladium was 600 800 dollars at the time, it had this very large concentrated short position, say, 10 years ago or so. And today, it doesn't have a big concentrated short position. And the price is three, four, five times higher. That's exactly what's going to happen in silver. It's a, it's a template for what's going to happen in silver is that when this concentrated short position in silver gets to be in line, okay, with the short positions and every other commodity that's traded, then the price is going to be free and we're going to see the equivalent move in silver or more, but the equivalent move in silver that we saw in palladium, a five or six times move from where we are right now. And generally speaking, because silver is a primary investment asset, it's probably going to blow off much more than that what held palladium down, if you want to call it that, but to $3,000 or so, was that it, it's not a big investment item. It's strictly a, it's a precious metal, but it's an industrial item more than anything else, whereas silver is both. It's got the industrial kicker and the uh, investment asset kicker, which is, you know, why we're talking about it today.